Let me go back in. All right. Happiness is a mental habit which can be cultivated and developed. Most people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be, said Abraham Lincoln. Happiness is purely internal, says psychologist Dr. Matthew N. Chapel. It is produced not by objects, but by ideas, thoughts, and attitudes, which can be developed and constructed by the individual's own activities, irrespective of environment. No one other than a saint can be 100% happy all the time. And as George Bernard Shaw quipped, we would probably be miserable if we were. <laughs> but we can, by taking thought and making a simple decision, be happy and think pleasant thoughts a large share of the time. Regarding the multitude of little events and circumstances of daily living, which now make us unhappy. To a large extent, we react to petty annoyances, frustrations, and the like with grumpiness, dissatisfaction, resentment, and irritability purely out of habit. We have practiced reacting that way so long it has become habitual. Much of this habitual unhappiness reaction originated because of some event which we interpreted as a blow to our self-esteem. A driver honks his horn at us unnecessarily. Someone interrupts and doesn't pay attention while we're talking. Someone doesn't come through for us as we think he should. Even impersonal events can be interpreted and reacted to as affronts to our self-esteem. The bus we wanted to catch had to be late. It had to go in rain when we had planned to play golf. Traffic had to get in a snarl just when we needed to catch the plane. We react with anger, resentment, self-pity, or in other words, unhappiness. Stop letting things push you around. The best cure I found for this sort of thing is to use unhappiness's own weapon, self-esteem. Have you ever been on a TV or been to a TV show and seen the master of ceremonies manipulate the audience? I asked a patient, or I asked a patient. He brings out a sign which says applause and everyone applauds. He brings out another which says laughter and everyone laughs. They act like sheep as if they were slaves and meekly react as they are told to react. You are acting the same way. You're letting outward events and other people dictate to you how you shall feel and how you shall react. You're acting as an obedient slave and obeying promptly when some event or circumstance signals you to be angry, get upset, or now is the time to feel unhappy. Learning the happiness habit, you become a master instead of a slave. Or as Robert Louis Stevenson said, the habit of being happy enables one to be freed or largely freed from the domination of outward conditions. Your opinion can add to unhappy events. Even in regard to tragic conditions and the most adverse environment, we can usually manage to be happier if not completely happy, by not adding to the misfortune our own feelings of self-pity, resentment, and our own adverse opinions. How can I be happy? The wife of an alcoholic husband asked me. I don't know, I said, but you can be happier by resolving not to add resentment and self-pity to your misfortune. How can I be happy? Asked the businessman. I've just lost $200,000 on the stock market. I am ruined and disgraced. You can be happier, I said, by not adding to your own opinion to the facts. It is a fact that you lost $200,000. It is your opinion that you're ruined and disgraced. I then suggested that he memorize the saying of Epictus, which has always been a favorite of mine. Men are disturbed, said the stage, not by things that happen, but by their opinions of the things that happen. When I announced I wanted to be a doctor, I was told that this could not be because my folks had no money. It was a fact that my mother had no money. It was only an opinion that I could never be a doctor. Later, I was told I could never take postgraduate courses in Germany and that it was impossible for a young plastic surgeon to hang out his own shingle and go into business for himself in New York. I did all these things. And one of the things that helped me was that I kept reminding myself that all these impossibles were opinions, not facts. I not only managed to reach my goals, 
but I was happy in the process, even when I had to pawn my overcoat to buy medical books and do without lunch in order to purchase cadavers. I was in love with a beautiful girl. She married someone else. These were facts. But I kept reminding myself that it was merely my opinion that this was a catastrophe and that life was not worth living. I not only got over it, but it turned out that it was one of the luckiest things that ever happened to me. The attitude that makes for happiness. It has been pointed out earlier that since man is a goal-striving being, he is functionally, naturally, and normally, or he is functioning naturally and normally when he is oriented towards some positive goal and striving towards some desirable goal. Happiness is a symptom of normal, natural functioning, and when man is functioning as a goal striver, he tends to feel fairly happy regardless of the circumstances. My young business executive friend was very unhappy because he lost $200,000. Thomas A. Edison lost a laboratory worth millions in a fire with no insurance. What in the world will you do? Someone asked. We will start rebuilding tomorrow morning, said Edison. He maintained an aggressive attitude and was still goal-oriented despite his misfortune. And because he did maintain an aggressive goal-striving attitude, it is a good bet that he was never unhappy about his loss. Psychologist H.L. Hollingworth has said that happiness requires problems, plus a mental attitude that is ready to meet distress with action toward a solution. Much of what we call evil is due entirely to the way men take the phenomenon, said William James. It can so often be converted into a bracing and a tonic, good by a simple change for the sufferer's inner attitude from one of fear to one of fight. Its sting can so often depart and turn into a relish when, after vainly seeking to shun it, we agree to face about and bear it cheerfully. That a man is simply bound in honor with reverence to many of the facts that seem at first to discern or disconcern his peace, to adopt this way of escape, refuse to admit their badness, despise their power, ignore their presence, turn your attention the other way. And so far as you yourself are concerned at any rate, though the facts may still exist, their evil character no longer exists no longer, since you make them evil or good by your own thoughts about them. It is the ruling of your thoughts which proves to be your principal concern. Looking back on my own life, I can see that some of the happiest years were those when I was struggling through as a medical student and living from hand to mouth in my early days of practice. Many times I was hungry. I was cold and ill-clad. I worked hard a minimum of about 12 hours a day. Many days I did not know from month to month where the money was going to come from to pay my rent. But I did have a goal. I had a consuming desire to reach it and a determined persistence which kept me working toward it. I related all this to the young business executive and suggested that the real, real cause of his unhappy feeling was not that he lost $200,000, but that he had lost his goal. He had lost his aggressive attitude and was yielding passively rather than reacting aggressively. Acquiring the habit of happiness. I must have been crazy, he told me later, to let you convince me that losing the money was not what was making me unhappy. But I'm awfully glad that you did. He stopped moaning about his misfortune, faced about, got himself another goal, and started working toward it. Within five years, he not only had more money than ever before in his life, but for the first time, he was in a business that he enjoyed. Practice exercise. Form the habit of reacting aggressively and positively towards threats and problems. Form the habit of keeping goal-oriented all the time, regardless of what happens. Do this by practicing a positive, aggressive attitude, both in actual everyday situations, which come up, and also in your imagination. See yourself in your imagination taking positive, intelligent action toward solving a problem or reaching a goal. See yourself reacting to threats, not by running away or evading them, but by meeting them, dealing with them, grappling with them in an aggressive and intelligent manner. Most people are brave only in the dangers to which they accustom themselves, either in imagination or practice, said 
Bulwer Lighton, the English novelist. Let me repeat that. Most people are brave only in the dangers in which they accustom themselves either in imagination or practice. Systematically practice healthy mindedness. The measure of mental health is the disposition to find good everywhere, said the most famous moralist, Ralph Waldo Emerson. The idea that happiness or keeping one's thoughts pleasant most of the time can be deliberately and systematically cultivated by practicing in a more or less cold-blooded manner strikes many of my patients as rather incredible, if not ludicrous, when I first suggest it. Yet experience has shown not only that this can be done, but that it is about the only way that the habit of happiness can be cultivated. In the first place, happiness isn't something that happens to you. It is something you yourself do and determine upon. If you wait for happiness to catch up with you or just happen or be brought to you by others, you're likely to have a long wait. No one can decide what your thoughts shall be but yourself. If you wait until circumstances justify your thinking, pleasant thoughts, you are also likely to wait forever. Every day is a mixture of good and evil. No day or circumstance is completely 100% good. There are, there are mints, in fact, I think, <laughs> there are mints, okay, moments, and facts presented in the world and in our personal lives at all times, which justify either a pessimistic and grumpy outlook or an optimistic and happy outlook, depending upon our choice. It is largely a matter of selection, attention, and decision. Or is it a matter of being either intellectually honest or dishonest, good as real as evil, or good is as real as evil? It is merely a matter of to what we choose to give primary attention and what thoughts we hold in the mind. Deliberately choosing to think pleasant thoughts is more than a palliative. It can have very practical results. Carl Erskine, the famous baseball pitcher, has said that bad thinking got him into more spots than bad pitching. One sermon has helped me overcome pressure better than the advice of any coach, he said. Its, subs its substance was that, like a squirrel hoarding chestnuts, we should store up our moments of happiness and triumph so that in a crisis, we can draw upon these memories for help and inspiration. As a kid, I used to fish at the bend of a little country stream just outside my hometown. I can vividly remember the spot in the middle of a big green pasture surrounded by tall, cool trees. Whenever tension builds up, both on or off the ball field now, I concentrate on this relaxing scene and the knots inside me loosen up. Gene Tunney tells how concentrating on the wrong facts almost caused him to lose his first fight with Jack Dempsey. He awoke one night from a nightmare. The vision was of himself bleeding and mauled and helpless, sinking into the canvas and being counted out. I couldn't stop trembling. Right there, I had already lost that ring match, which meant everything to me, the championship. What could I do about this terror? I could guess the cause. I'd been thinking about the fight in the wrong way. I'd been reading the newspapers and all they said was how Tenny or Tunny would lose. Through the newspapers, I was losing the battle in my own mind. Important stuff, everybody. Through the newspapers, I was losing the battle in my own mind. Through the internet, <laughs> I was losing the battle through social media, listening to the outside. Part of the solution was obvious. Stop reading the papers. Stop thinking of, of the Dempsey menace, Jack's killing punch and ferocity of attack. I simply had to close the doors of my mind to destructive thoughts and divert my thinking to other things. A salesman who needed surgery on his thoughts rather than his nose. A young salesman had made up his mind to quit his job when he consulted me about an operation on his nose. His nose was slightly larger than normal, but certainly not repul repulsive as he insisted. He felt that prospects were secretly laughing at his nose or repulsed because of it. It was a fact that he had a large nose. It was a fact that three customers 
had called to complain of his rude and hostile behavior. It was a fact that his boss had placed him on probation and that he had made a sale in two weeks. Instead of an operation on his nose, I suggested he perform surgery on his own thinking. For 30 days, he was to cut out all these negative thoughts. He was to completely ignore all the negative and unpleasant facts in this, this situation and deliberately focus his attention upon pleasant thoughts. At the end of 30 days, he not only felt better, but he found that prospects and customers had become much more friendly. His sales were steadily increasing and his boss had publicly congratulated him in, sale, in a sales meeting. A scientist tests the theory of positive thinking. Dr. Elwood Worcester in his book, Body, Mind and Spirit relates the testimony of a world famous scientist. Up to my 50th year, I was an unhappy, ineffective man. None of the works on which my reputation rests were published. I lived in a constant sense of gloom and failure. Perhaps my most painful symptom was a blinding headache, which recurred usually two days of the week during which I could do nothing. I had read some of the literature of New Thought, which at the time appeared to be Boncom, <laughs> and some statement of William James on the directing of attention to what is good and useful and ignoring the rest. One saying of his stuck in my mind, we might have to give up our philosophy of evil, but what is that in comparison with gaining a life of goodness? Let's think about that for a moment. We might have to give up our philosophy of evil, but what is that in comparison with gaining a life of goodness? Or words to that effect. Hitherto, these doctrines had seemed to me only mystical theories, but realizing that my soul was sick and growing worse, and that my life was intolerable, I determined to put them to the proof. I decided to limit the period of conscious effort to one month. As I thought this time long enough to prove its value or worthlessness to me. During this month, I resolved to impose certain restrictions on my thoughts. If I thought of the past, I would try to let my mind dwell only on its happy, pleasant incidents, the bright days of my childhood, the inspiration of my teachers, and the slow revelation of my life work. In thinking of the present, I would deliberately turn my attention to its desirable elements, my home, the opportunities my solitude gave me to work, and so on. And I resolved to make the utmost use of these opportunities and to ignore the fact that they seem to be leading to nothing. In thinking of the future, I determined to regard every worthy and possible ambition as within my grasp. Let me repeat that. In thinking of the future, I determined to regard every worthy and possible ambition as within my grasp. As rid ridiculous as this seemed at the time, in view of what had come to me, in view of what had come to me since, I see the only defect in my plan was that I aimed too low and did not include enough. He then tells how his headache ceased within one week and how he felt happier and better than ever before in his life. But he adds, the outward changes in my life resulting from my change of thought has surprised me more than the inward changes, yet they spring from the latter. There were certain eminent men, for example, whose recognition I deeply craved. The foremost of those wrote me out of a clear sky and invited me to become his assistant. My works have all been published and a foundation has been created to publish all that I may write in the future. The men with whom I have worked have been very helpful and cooperative toward me, chiefly on account of my changed disposition. Formerly, they would not have endured me. As I look back over all these changes, it seems to me that in some blind way, I stumbled on a path of life and set forces to working for me, which before were against me. How an inventor used happy thoughts. Professor Elmer Gates of the Smithsonian Institution was one of the most successful inventors this country has ever known and a recognized genius. He made a daily practice of calling up pleasant ideas and memories 
and believed that this helped him in his work. If a person wants to improve himself, he said, let him summon those finer feelings of benevolence and usefulness, which are called up only now and then. Let him make this a regular exercise, like swinging dumbbells. Let him gradually increase the time devoted to these psychic, yeah, psychical gymnastics. And at the end of the month, he will find the change in himself surprising. The alteration will be apparent in his actions and thoughts. Morally speaking, the man will be a great improvement of his former self. All right. So we will go ahead and stop or pause there until tomorrow. And you guys know the drill. This is your opportunity to share whatever you'd like to share or ask whatever questions you would like to ask. So go ahead and this is your time. Anybody, anything to share, any questions to ask? I've got a question. Okie dokie. So I've been uh, really focusing my studies um, past couple of days on the various laws of the universe. Um, what are ways that we can uh, implement those laws into our daily lives that you can think of? Like the law of transmutation and polarity, uh, law of gender, I'm sure you're familiar. Yeah, yeah. Um, partly being aware that they're going on in the background is the big part of it. And then what I tend to do is if there's a thought that comes to me that I'm not heading in the direction I want to, or I feel stuck or anything towards the negative, then I try to use the positive side of it. You know, if I'm going to compare myself to somebody, I'm never well parent comparing myself to somebody doing better than me, <laughs> right? Because it doesn't make me look good but I can always compare my situation to something that's worse and then my situation looks better, right? So what the biggest use of the laws, in my opinion, it's not like we physically go out and use the law. It gives us a, a reference or framework around which to use our thinking because our thinking is actually doing all the work. All those laws that we're talking about, they're just going in the background. So by knowing that that's actually what's happening it lets me calm down and chill out and allows me to say, okay, my, pro my part is actually simple. It's maybe difficult, especially in the beginning, if I'm not programmed that way, because I've got to hold, I got to get used to going, okay, it's my thinking that, that does 99. My job is 99% thinking, 1% action. In a sense, not saying I don't take any actions, right? But if, if I look at it as God's working behind the scenes and has other people moving around and I don't even know what's happening and that my, my purpose is to stay connected so that when he says, now's the time, I actually listen to him, right? When he says, okay, now's the time to pick up the phone. Now's the time to send the email. Now's the time to go to this networking thing. Now's the time. Whatever it is, now's the time to go stand on your head for an hour on the corner. <laughs> Whatever it is that I'm being asked to do, you know, I, I go about still having my day, but I stay, I want to stay connected so I know what I'm supposed to do. And the only way I'm truly going to know what I'm supposed to do is if I'm quiet enough in my mind and open enough in my mind and my heart that I'm, I'm willing to receive that. And not more importantly than just willing to receive it. I'm willing to act on it, even if it's not what I want to hear. See, we get ourselves stuck as we're like, tell me, unless it's not something I want to hear from you, mm -hmm. <laughs> then don't tell me because I want what I want. Right. And that's where for me, the, it's always this or something better. Because if I'm going to ask for something, I'm, I have a desire for something. There's nothing really wrong with that desire. I just maybe 
the way I wanted to come about isn't going to be the best for me. And God knows there's a better way to deliver it and maybe a better, you know, I want this house and th this one's actually got everything I wanted. Plus, you know, I want to go this way with the work I do for my life. I'm thinking I'm involved with this, but God says, guess what? Your talent, skills, and abilities act and your joy and happiness fit this better. But I'm not even aware that it does yet because I've never tried it. God says, this, I want you to go this direction and try this out and go, whoa, that actually does work out really well for me. Like I took years and my wife too was telling me, I took years to become the coach that I am. Not that it took years to become a coach. I took years to step into what I should have probably been doing a long time ago. I could have started this way back in probably, I mean, I, I learned it pretty well in 2006, well enough to have good results. And I felt in a lot of ways that I should, not that year or the year after, but two or three years later, I felt like I ought to do something like this. But in my mind, I was making good money doing what I was doing, what I'd been led to do. And I didn't know what was possible with this. And so I based it upon money. I should have based it upon just listen to that guidance. And I'd, instead of done, having done this, you know, as my profession for the last couple of years, I would have been doing it for the last 15 or 16 years already. Not that things like were always awful because I didn't, but I could feel that it was like, this would have been so natural. It would have built up so much bigger. And who knows where I'd be, you know, if I'd been doing this for 16 years already, mm -hmm. I, I would probably be earning 10, $20 million a year. Because I've, I see what somebody like a Bob Proctor has done with it or a Jack Canfield or whoever. And it's highly possible. That wouldn't be my only reason for doing it, but that's the impact that would have happened by now. Right. So I didn't, I haven't always listened. Yeah. <laughs> I've made my own choices, like we all do sometimes. And the mm -hmm. results just aren't as good when it's my own idea, all by myself. Well, I'm glad you didn't, because then you probably wouldn't be our coach right now. Uh, it'd be somebody. Yeah. <laughs> it, it would be somebody. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's all good now. The, the best part is we're eternal beings. We, when we recognize that we should do something, we all, we always have that, you know, it's not just karma, but the law of forgiveness. When we're able to forgive ourselves, God's going to forgive us nearly instantly. We just have to ask. And then us forgiving ourselves is usually what takes longer. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't, <laughs> but it tends to be the part that takes longer. We beat ourselves up when God's not sitting around waiting to beat on us. He doesn't get any enjoyment from beating on us. Mm -hmm. it's not like aha I caught you let's go <laughs> yeah okay cool yeah I appreciate it yeah you're welcome you're welcome hey and Kevin hi Stephanie so I've got a fun thing to share awesome. um, so in our calls last week I was telling you well we went through our 300 list yeah. and on one of those things if you recall was the venture capitalist work uh-huh well, with everything still waiting on this job opportunity that we've been discussing, um, one of the folks that I've been dealing with week to week, who's kind of been giving me the updates, when she found out things were delayed, she offered to introduce me to someone here in San Diego um, in my field of work. And it turns out that not only um, is he pretty high up and, and I'm going to meet with him this Thursday, but he's also a venture capitalist. He works with angel investors awesome. and he's a mentor. And I was like, wow, kind, you hit it right on the head. <laughs> That's awesome. You know what? And if you left already, you wouldn't be meeting this guy. Yeah, I wouldn't have been gone, but yes. I, well, I think it was just being open. Like you said, that it, things are going to be coming in some path. It's probably not the path that you think. Right. Yeah. Right. Stay so, open to all the channels. Yeah, pretend like we are cable and instead of what TV was like 40 years ago when we were little kids and we got ten, you know, seven channels to choose from. Right. So <laughs> I just thought that was fun. And I was uh, enjoying that little connection this weekend. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Anybody else?
Yes, no, maybe so. Hello, Kevin, it's Takira, how are you? Hey, terrific, how are you Takira? I'm pretty good, thank you so much for asking. Um, I guess this kind of hit the nail on the head because I had this revelation today that within my business um, all weekend, I kind of was stressing over it, hammering. And um, something to me said, listen, if this isn't the avenue that God wants you to take, you know, you can always go back into the classroom. Um, I would always be able to do what I love, but that's not what I want. I want to be an entrepreneur and I'm going to pursue this, but I put myself on a deadline. I don't know if this is right, but I said, you know, by September 1st, I'm in the process of getting the paperwork with the state. Um, so it's a time thing. You have to wait for the um, background checks and the criminal charges. And, you know, for kids, you had to be very sure. particular. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been sitting back waiting. I ordered my family, you know, my um, first aid kit all the legwork in the process. But then this weekend I was just stressing out like, because people are like rushing me. Well, when are you gonna open? When are you gonna open? And I'm just like, God, if you say don't open and or it doesn't work out when I do open, maybe there's another path. Am I being um, too forthcoming and giving up so to speak? Because I kind of feel better now that I know hey, I have an option. Um, even though I want this path to work with my own business at home. I don't want it to be for naught. Like, I don't want to put all this work in. So I don't know how to feel. Okay. I'm going to shut my camera off for a second just so I can hear you a little better just because you broke up a little bit. Um, but I, I, I got, I got, I think I got everything I needed for, for this. You know, a thought that's come to me too is you've been a school teacher, right? What's, uh, if you're willing to share, right? What's the most money you made in a year? 45, 50,000. Okay. What topics are you, I, and I know, or what ages have you taught in the past? Hmm. My niche is. Why don't you turn your video uh, off and see if that gives us better sound? I, up until fifth grade okay, do, do me a favor turn your video off and just go to audio okay now tell me okay um i can hear I've you taught, a lot better okay good my niche is really um early childhood but i've taught up until um sixth grade and i've also taught a foreign exchange group of students and they were high schoolers from different countries so okay. i can go from birth to 18 years old what what topics did you teach um, I taught the whole curriculum, so English, math, science. My favorite is STEM, so science, and my degree is in English. But as a teacher, you know, of a preschool class, you basically run the day with your own curriculum, so you teach mm -hmm. the whole thing. Um, so it's not like a history teacher or math. It's really the whole day for the whole child right. um, with early childhood. But my specialty, when I first started teaching, was in charter schools. Okay. Um, but I absolutely abhor the political system of teaching, but I do sure. love to teach. Okay. Okay. So you like rich people, don't you? I love wealthy people. <laughs> <laughs> so much. <laughs> Why? I, just, just a, just a, I'm just brainstorming with you. Okay. Uh -huh. um, could you teach? in such a way where you don't need a school, you've got total flexibility because you can teach from anywhere in the world or you could do some of it in person if you feel like it, uh -huh. but could you teach either online or could you teach for just some wealthy families that gather together at one person's house and teach certain topics to their kids? When I say teach, you could teach it but instead of maybe calling yourself a teacher, unless you want to, uh -huh. um, to get around, what are the rules between being a tutor and a teacher? Oh, uh, there's really, I mean, a teacher, you need more credentials. You need a bachelor's degree. Right. You and, got, so you got all that. But uh -huh. I mean, so that if you call yourself a tutor, even though you know all that stuff, uh -huh. you have to abide by a bunch of rules. No. So why not just find somebody that wants their kids to learn not necessarily that they want their kids to go to school. school. 
And that's where my problem is because my website, if I could, I'll share it probably this week. It has tutoring on my website. That is one of the services I wanted to offer. But my, I don't know where to get these families from. I don't even know what I would teach. Well, you like, said all I, these people are waiting, wanting you to open. Who? You, oh, these are just people that are like people. They don't have children. They're just like, I call them groupies. They're just people watching me, you know, whether it's on Facebook or, or just people in general. Okay, well, don't worry about people. <laughs> oh. If they don't have if they don't have any kids, they don't get any say so. No, they're not potential clients. They're just people that are being nosy. Um, oh, so but why they don't are you paying attention? attention. Oh no, I'm actually I blocked a lot of them off because I think that they're stunting my growth because um, I don't want to build something that's going to fail. I want to be ready. You know, I don't want to be early. I want to be on time, and I wanted to do it to do it right so the parents could stay with me. I don't want them to have like a, a fly by night, you know, business. I want it professional, classy mm -hmm. and educational. So I guess what you're saying to me is to try to think outside the box, but that's what's causing me the stress is trying to think, think, think of what to do. I just want it to just work. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't want to think that's, <laughs> that's the work. Thinking you get paid more money to <laughs> The wealthiest people in the world get paid for their thinking more than their physical prowess, unless they're uh, an athlete. And then even when they're an athlete, the ones that actually think are the ones that do the best. That's, uh, how, they, that's how they beat the ones that just play, is they uh -huh. actually think. So I bet you there are people out there. I, I don't have all the details yet, just because I'm not trying to build your business. Uh -huh. but you could do what you're talking about. Look, you're, you're talking about wanting to be wealthy. Uh -huh. I don't know if you found one, tell me, and I'm not saying it's not possible. Okay. Uh -huh. Who is the wealthiest school teacher you've ever met? Ooh, probably a principal that I know. Okay. That I and, uh, if it's a principal, how much money does the principal make? Oh, they only made six figures, so like probably a hundred and forty thousand at the most. Right, right, right. What life do you want to live? A life of happiness and freedom and abundance and joy. Well, what, what stuff do you want to buy? Will one hundred and forty thousand cover it? No way, Jose. Yeah, exactly. So the other stress is you're already starting to build a business that five years from now is not going to ever give you what you want financially. I'm not, I'm not uh -huh. saying you can't, okay, but you're starting, it, it would be like me trying to start Walmart, right? Uh -huh. I mean, they, they've got, their margins are so small, my opportunity to do that and have it grow big in a short, I'm not saying it's not possible if you're being guided to do it, and maybe uh -huh. you have other reasons than money to do it, okay? Uh -huh. But I, what I'm saying is you have skills and you have people that are willing to pay you, and you could probably find somebody you wouldn't get rich doing it, but in the short term to, to take care of your bills, you can probably find somebody that'll pay you 50, 60, 70 grand a year to be a school teacher instead of getting paid 45, just uh -huh. by picking the right situation. But what you want more is freedom and flexibility so that you can start some other type of business or attract somebody, I suppose. I mean, I never... <laughs> I'm not saying you can't do it. It's possible. Shoot, I've read where it's happened, where people mm -hmm. will attract the money through a spouse or whatever, mm -hmm. right? The other, the significant other. However, I just stay focused on the lifestyle you want to live. But part mm -hmm. of your frustration, again, is you know as well as I do that what you want to do for work and the amount of money it'll bring you, it's... It's not in teaching for a school, <laughs> Right. You now you can create something that involves teaching that is unique that would turn into something much bigger and, and whatnot. Do you want to do that? And you know, you don't only look to other people to see what they've accomplished to make decisions. That's not because God can do anything. Right. But if you are checking out a profession. And you're like, okay, what's the average and what's the, what's the top? I always like to look at what do the top in people make in it? Cause I assume I'm going to be at the top of what I'm doing. Uh. And if the top end 
financially would bring me the satisfaction financially that I want, then that would be a good thing to pursue because my possibilities are there, you know. But if I'm pursuing doing something that the top end won't make it, then I have to say, okay, then could I have a bunch of top end people working for me? And could I be the best marketer of the bunch at getting us clients? Because then I can find great people to do the fulfillment and I focus on acquisition. If you ever watch Shark Tank, the questions that some of them will ask is what's your acquisition cost? What's it cost you to get a client? Not how much is per sale and whatever, but uh, what's it cost you to acquire that client? And then what's their value over time? Okay. So. That's a big help. Yeah. If you want a school in your house, that's fine. Understand a school in your house is not going to pay for the other stuff. That doesn't mean you shouldn't. Right. When Bob Proctor, well, you don't know what Bob Proctor has been saying because you're not part of the, <laughs> the coaching, but um, basically when you take the science of getting rich, it's talking about, look, you can, Bob says, look, you should get emotionally compensated and you should be emotionally and spiritually and you should be, you know, financially compensated. They don't have to both come from the same thing, but you do need both in your life. If it comes from the same thing, great. If you get your emotional uplift and your spiritual uplift comes from a source that doesn't pay you well, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You may oh. still do it, but it means you got to find another place to pay you well, or multiple sources, multiple channels. But if what you like to do and what gives you spiritual uplift, emotional uplift is also some, a profession or business that can also cover the lifestyle that you want, then obviously that's terrific. That's a little bit easier. Okay. Is there like a certain affirmation that you think would help us when we get stuck and like that we could like look at as an end result and then go from there? Or well, would you I, say you're, I don't know what you're, I mean, I know what you're stuck in. You're stuck in building the, putting your school together at the moment. Mm hmm. But does your school fit in? When I ask you you're about your lifestyle, mm -hmm. visualize and project out how you want your life to be, in that vision, do you see yourself teaching or do you see yourself doing other things with your time and your money? I see myself definitely teaching for part of my day. I, I mean, even if it's three hours of a science activity, I just love working with kids. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I was just I think of affirmations maybe to say like I already now have X, Y, and Z, this client, and then let it just attract from well, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's helpful, but like going well, to the end result of what I want. Well, yeah, that's what <laughs> that would be stuff. that would be that would be the way to do it. Yeah. You go to the end result of what you want all the time. That's where you should be in your thought process is end result feeling good about it and if if it's tough to feel good about it then think about something else that makes you happy for now you know if you're, if you're get away from what it is you're trying to figure out and let god in the, i like having god as my business partner and my life partner mm -hmm. because then i could ask him <laughs> or say you know in i can't boss god around but I, can mm -hmm. ask God, but I can say, hey, look, I feel like I've done what I can do at this point. If there's anything you think I should do or you want me to do right now, I'm open to doing it if you tell me. If not, I'm going to go chill and let you work behind the scenes on this because you obviously know better than I do. And maybe it's time for me to step back for a little bit and wait for you to do your yes. thing and then come back into the game. Think of it kind of like a tag team wrestling match, except he's like Goliath and you're this little mouse. <laughs> Kevin, you're a guru because that literally, I don't want to take up too much time. Maybe just another minute. I don't want it to be okay. selfish. It's, no, that's I know fine. last night I had a, a meditation and literally the lady said, um, let, letting go is the topic. And we had to picture a tug of war. And on the other side, I visualized all my worries, this business and all my endeavors. And I, I heard God say, let go of the rope, like, let it go. You know, and I think that what you're saying kind of coincides where, you know, he's saying to me, let it go for a minute, not don't focus and love it, but just 
something in my spirit is saying, Kira, let it go. Not let it go where I don't want to ever have it. Just uh-huh. think about something else and know he's working it out. Right. In my favor. But I want a lot of money cut, you know, out of it. I think my talent is astronomical. And I think that I'm worthy of the amount. And I want mm-hmm. millions, not just because yeah. it's a million. I want a lot of money to support my lifestyle. So cool. I'll create an affirmation that says that and just live off of that. I yeah. think that'll be good. Yeah. yeah, just again, understand. And I'm not saying it isn't possible at all. I'm saying that if you're wanting millions, are there any school to, I, I do know people that earn millions of dollars at universities. Mm. They coach athletics for the best teams in the country. Oh, that's good to know. That, I'm, Cause I don't know any millionaire teachers, no. No, there aren't millionaire teachers per se, but there's millionaire coaches. There's coaches that make his, that make anywhere from, I, I was looking it up, not because I wanted to be a coach. I was just, I noticed that, okay, the top coaches in college, if they're in, in a system, they make a bunch of money. So yes, there are people in our educational system that make a lot of money, but they don't get make, they don't make a lot of money for teaching. You know why they make a lot of money? Because mm-hmm. their organization and program wins and that brings in revenue into the college. Mm -hmm. bringing in millions of dollars the college can pay out millions of dollars the thing is when somebody's teaching english or teaching science or whatever Mm -hmm. on that level they can only pay out so much there are Mm -hmm. professors that'll make six figures there's very few that are ever going to make seven figures outside of having their own business and teaching also or building their business and then teaching later on you know or kind of like teaching when they feel like it Mm. so but you're talking about teaching pretty young kids and our society doesn't appreciate that very much at all I have the most underpaid yeah job career path but I don't care I love the satisfaction that I get but I do want to be a millionaire but maybe it won't come from this avenue bye yay yay but that's that doesn't that doesn't mean you can't become a millionaire does anybody else, <laughs> you, got, you got this look on your face, Landon, like, I want to tell you something. I do. So <laughs> I can tell. this is kind of my, my thought on it. Um, if that's what you truly love, then I think that you should continue to pursue it. And other avenues will kind of appear as you start going in that direction. Um, and maybe it's not just, you know, face-to-face teaching, but maybe it turns into like a virtual teaching to where, you, you're able to um, approach more kids at once. And yep. the more people you're able to teach at one time, the more money you'll make. Just because it's not done yet and hasn't been done yet doesn't mean that it's not possible. Yep. It's just, mm-hmm. If you keep moving towards that, you know, that dream <laughs> and you hold onto your vision of what you want, then I think um, more avenues will kind of appear and you'll be able to walk down those. Um, but just don't close off your, your vision as like, that's the only thing you want to do, you know, stay open to all the, uh, you know, the different ways that you can get there. Thank you. That's really helpful. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I can see your face. And that's probably well, a little bit yeah. what I've been trying to say is, yeah, you can do something. It's just going to have to be different than what you're going to be able to do sitting in your house with 15 kids sitting around you in a circle. If you're right. going to become a millionaire that way, then you're going to have to go find the sheik of whatever probably that has, you know, billions of dollars and says, I'll pay you to teach my kids $150,000 a kid. And I got a dozen right. of them. <laughs> you yeah. <know>? Right. <laughs> Versus okay. what Landon said, creating a system to teach a lot of people and, you know, create a, a different type of a school that you get compensated correctly for where everybody who teaches gets compensated correctly for. Okay. I'm going to, I wrote that down as an affirmation that I now teach a lot of people internationally and with great compensation. Cool. That, that's my that affirmation. Feels good. It feels better than the way I came on the call. So cool. I'm happy. Thank you Stephanie, guys. What you got? Kira, what kept popping up in my head 
the whole mm -hmm. time was, um, I, I don't, maybe you've already looked at it, but monastery schools. Um, my cousin is teaching in one in Switzerland. I have a friend that teaches one in Texas. There's a lot more flexibility and a lot better pay if it's something to get you on the path of where you want to go. I, I just thought I'd bring it up. I really appreciate that. The only thing about monasteries is that they teach all different ages and I kind of don't agree with their philosophy. So they might have a, a three-year-old with a seven-year-old in the same classroom or a bunch of eight-year-olds with two-year-olds, I mean like five-year-olds. I kind of like the grades to stay like, you know, uniform. So they're individually growing together. It's more work, but it's a good opportunity with Montessori because they do get a lot more money than private schools. But that is an option. So I do appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. There's also the homeschooling angle to this. Yep. Yeah, but I'm like, where are the kids? Where are the clients? I need them knocking well, at my door. Oh. Well, that is something you'd you have to build into. I I actually tried to talk my sister into doing something like that because she homeschooled all her kids. Um, you know, in California, I don't know how it is in the rest of the country, or if it's still that way here. When you homeschool, you still are under the guidance of a bona fide teacher. And she, she oversees the parents teaching. And the kids actually, the homeschool kids actually have to pass tests that are over and above what the regular school kids have to pass. And I think the purpose of that was that they really kind of don't want them to pass because they lose money. The state loses, loses funding. So they make it harder on the homeschool kids. But there's a teacher that oversees the parents and helps them and with the curriculum and everything. That might be an angle for you since you've got so much experience with all the grades. Oh yeah. That is I so think well. that would be kind of rewarding too. I yeah. Would I hope because I've really been feeling stuck. With what's going on in the schools, I think a lot of people are going to be pulling their kids out of school. Right, with this COVID and everything. So I just got to attract those people to hopefully meet them in the process um, of my daily activities. Maybe walking down the street, I might bump into a person and it'll well, happen think, that way. Takira, it's actually okay to research. I mean, that. so mm -hmm. it, it's fine to do things because in the process, you, you come across more. God still wants us to grow. Mm -hmm. So there, there are things that we can do and the research is never really a wasted thing. And mm -hmm. if you're waste, you know, and ask God, hey, if I'm, you know, going in the wrong direction, pull me out, put me in the right direction. For mm -hmm. now, I'm, I'm going to look into, you know, whatever it is you're going to look into. The other thing you could do going along, you could kind of take a little bit of what everybody said. Mm -hmm. And why not create and you could do it online. You know, one of the things that homeschoolers, um, families usually kind of struggle with a little bit is yeah what what do I utilize for some form of curriculum and there's different methodologies out there but what you could do is create something you know the, the schoolers university meaning it's a place where the parents come to learn how to teach their kids or and if the parents are too busy they can plug them into your class for X dollars per class or X dollars per week or X dollars per month. So some of the parents will start out doing it and then they may go get a job. They may decide that they're good at teaching two subjects, but the third one they're not so good at. And you make yourself a support system to where you train parents and or you teach the classes the parents don't want to. And here, the, kind of like what I just did, I'm here for math at this time and I'm here for this at this time because you can always do recorded stuff but you don't have the Q&A side of it with what we're doing right here you got the Q&A side of it so now you become a lot more mobile and unlimited in what you could do Absolutely. I don't think finding people would be especially hard once you put out that but you have to be ready to teach like tomorrow like, okay, right. if, if you're prepared, then God will say, okay, you're ready for students. Let's go for this thing because you don't need other anything more than a computer to do this for now. 
and you can start getting paid. Right. Because I did find a curriculum for preschoolers and it's like a $1,200 curriculum. And I was thinking like, should I just buy it and then tweak it and use that to teach? But I didn't want to waste money not knowing if I was going too fast. So I just sat back and said, I'll wait for the state. But I'm thinking like I could do my own curriculum, but that's a lot of work. But I could do it because I enjoy a curriculum. Um, I love to make re- curriculums and lesson plans, but I could always buy one that's done and um, tweak it from there. And I will be ready by tomorrow. <laughs> well, not tomorrow, but like a few days from tomorrow, so to speak. So I'm getting closer. This is very, very helpful. Um, yeah, because I, I just picture like kids from India, China, like 20 kids, kind of like we do here, all on my screen at midnight in my PJs with my blazer on and teaching them. And then I go to bed and, no, you know, I don't have to leave the house. The parents don't have to bring their kids to school and I can still run my daycare in the morning time, you know, and I'll be doing what I love. And who knows, I might write a book, a children's book. I will, I'm in the process of writing one now, but you know, that could be a monopoly of money for me too. So yeah, I'm sorry I took all the people's time, but this is so helpful, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Getting You're us welcome. all thinking. <laughs> yep. Because I want us all to be really, really happy and wealthy and successful. And I don't know. I just want the best for everybody. Akira. You know, you could you could start kind of a, a Facebook group or a, a meetup group, parent <gasps> parent support group. That's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, just to test yourself out to see is this something I'd even like. Uh, I, you know, sometimes we think of things, but you don't really know if you're going to fall in love with it till you start dabbling in it a little bit. And this right. would be yeah. kind of non-committal. It'd be interesting to see how many people are out there that are being forced right now to to start teaching their children and they're stressed out like crazy because they don't themselves, they don't know the computer that much. And then they've got kids running all around them and they're not in control. So it might be a good thing. I know there's a guy, Jim Quick, he does the speed reading stuff. He's doing something similar with kids. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing something with kids too. So it might okay. be a way to start to just see if there's a market for you. Yeah, I was going to look into Meetup and I just didn't know what to do. So your confirmation, and it does have a section where Kevin might, might know because he does this, but it says like teach a class, grow your brand. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll like the part where it says like teach a class and I'll have like a free for some time parent support group and great you know grow the p- the parents see what they want what they need and then charge you know maybe after like a few weeks or so but then again I'm always denying myself money because what if it should be a charge to it now and I'm just trying to sell myself short which is not good to do but this is helpful. I'm going to look into that. Thank you, Rika. You're welcome. Security, one thing that I just thought about was like, if you found cool topics that uh-huh. you are very well versed in, you could even create your own personal like YouTube, um, you know, um, explanations and classes that, you know, not directed at anyone in particular, but have like, you know, five, 10 minute classes and then give out like, a few of them for free and then be like, okay. And if y'all want to hear more, here's a list. Here's like access to all of them on my website. And then if you want to also be part of my class, here's what, uh, where you can sign up to be like on my online class or something along those lines. Put your name out there. You guys are great. um, Brainstormers. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks so much. I'm really jotting this whole thing down. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Well, you got lots of lots of good ideas there. And there, yeah. The other thing too is not only do we have Google, but you can type almost anything into YouTube and figure out how it works. Oh. And find somebody who's doing it. You know, Landon Landon's correct there. And it, it's a good idea. And you can use it to get yourself started. You could use Meetup to build a following. Homeschool is a big topic throughout the country. There's I the only reason I'm not taking you through all the stuff that it takes to do with Meetup 
is mm -hmm. not because I don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. It's because it would take me a, quite a while to walk you through it. Oh, okay. And to learn what I know. Um, I can read it. Yeah, but there's other people less expensive than me. <laughs> that, oh, no, I don't want yeah. nobody but Kevin. I'm waiting to that day. I'm still waiting on my lawsuit. So maybe we could help manifest that so that I could be your cl client. Cool. I don't think I'll resonate with anyone else besides you, Kevin. <laughs> well, I've been here. I'm since okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I've been here since the beginning and I'm kind of, I don't know. I just, you just resonate with me and the group is like really fascinating. So I can't, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> you could reach out maybe to Ben because I taught Ben. <laughs> and he's, Who's Ben? He's got a real estate. He he comes on occasionally. He he's uh he's going to medical school right now though. Um, oh. He he's in the he's in the group, and I oh, taught him, I taught him how to build a sphere of influence with Meetup, and in less than a month, he's got like six seven hundred people. And he's your, but he's your client, like your, co your his coach, personal coach. Well, he's in the group coaching, but we've had some one-on-one -on -one conversations. He wants to invest in real estate. So he's created this big real estate investment group, kind of utilizing what I did a little bit to build this oh. plus things that I use when I worked with Robert Kiyosaki. And now he's got speakers that speak yeah. for him every week. And now he builds relationships with those people. So now he's got gurus that are friends of his that are great real estate yeah. investors and he's got relationships with those people and he's giving service to people in the group too by running yeah. it. Wow. So, there's, so there's, there's a ton of stuff that you, you can do. You just, mm -hmm. once you're ready to go, like, okay, mm -hmm. here, and I like what Landon said. If you've got stuff you really, really enjoy, then put your best foot forward and just start sharing some of those classes, give out homework, have, have that kind of like test taste. That's essentially okay. what you guys had for me is you kind of know what you get to some extent. Certainly you okay. get more than your client, but now you go, oh, okay, I kind of know what this person's about. Well, let people kind of know what you're about. You don't, don't worry about giving any, yes, do give some stuff because they got, they got to know who you are and it, they're not going to know who you are or how good you are at anything until they get some interaction from you. Mm. And, but once they recognize that, then, and you put something above and beyond that might cost them some money, they're more likely to say, okay, yeah, if, if Takira is, you know, if this is the way that this works and if she's good at it and she's got 50 other things to offer for my kids and it's worth it, then yeah, I'll do it. So, this is awesome. I'm jotting it all down. Let, I like, all, I like, by the way, all these ideas were good. I'm not knocking anybody's, but I like that idea of what Landon said. Take some stuff that you you know you're really good at that, that other people will be like, wow, she knows, not just she knows her stuff, but like, if you're really good at it and you like it, then you're passionate. So you come across as exciting and fun and now right. the kids will enjoy you. If you're just teaching stuff because the school system says teach it, you're oh. not, you won't enjoy it so much. And then that's going to come across. Right. Oh, I like just like fun stuff. I like to see the kids, you know, get excited. So like erupt in a, erupt in a volcano or making slime or something like, that makes noise and the kids just get to see it like, you know, come before their eyes. Stuff that's very interactive and it makes me light up. So I, I got to go in my teacher bag and, you know, try to think about what stuff I was successful at um over the years and then just do a five minute tutorial on it or even cooking like home economics i'm big on you know those type of things that they don't teach in the school system it's more so you know just like math you're boring science and all that but you know based home-based things that they'll need for later or gardening things like that or how to keep an autistic child you know um sane or calm or adhd students so I got a lot of research to do, but I'll put it together and try to pretend that tomorrow it needs to be done. <laughs> That's what I'll try to tell myself. Yeah, don't don't stress yourself out about it. Have fun oh. with it. And I could see you very easily creating a character out of yourself. <sighs> you think so? A yeah, creating you, know, you got Bill Nye, the science guy. You've got, oh, so who, who could you become? 
<laughs> ah, that's Seriously, a good one. because that's what will get that's the reputation right give and yourself a persona. a millionaire yeah give yourself a persona hmm. you know give yourself a persona that the kids or parents will love that they recognize you for okay okay the teaching gotta... girl yeah the teaching girl There's, yeah you know hmm. kids, are, kids are into their heroes right <laughs> hmm I'm going to think of something. It'll come to me. You guys are awesome. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. I took up the whole time. I'm so sorry. No, don't, don't apologize. I, I like at least knowing that somebody walks away <laughs> and has something they could actually go do as a result. So I will see some of you guys, hopefully all of you, but I know that, you know, you're doing whatever you're doing. Hopefully I'll see most of you guys though in about 45 minutes or so. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Thank you, Kevin. Uh-huh. You're welcome. Bye-bye.